Okay, so hi, hello everyone. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Uh, my name is Alessandro Longo and I'm a research and writer. Currently, I'm working at Curl Labs, that is a design and development agency for a distributed organization. Uh, I'm here today to take a bit of a retrospective look at what the sphere is and was during this year and also to move forward at the speed of trust, as the title says, and try to imagine some potential features. My, uh, at Curve Labs, we help deploy the Karmic engine, that is the core decentralized app of the sphere. And also our co-founder, Chem, was uh, into the project since the very beginning. So I had the privilege of having a quite close look to the sphere internal functioning. So that's the perspective from where I'm talking from. Sorry. Okay, yeah, this first, uh, so I want to start with showing this painting. It's called Angelus Novus by Paul Klee, and it has been famously described by the German philosopher Walter Benjamin. Uh, the interesting thing is that this angel has a kind of strange, uh, ambiguous posture because it's described by Benjamin as looking at the past while being moved by a current, a strong wind that is bringing him towards the future. I think that today I will assume this posture during this workshop and we will have a short retrospective look at the karmic engine and then try to, yeah, try to move towards possible directions and uh, yeah, futures for the sphere as a whole. So uh, the sphere uh, is inspired, as you know, obviously by the circus practices and circus was always a matter of risk-taking practices. Well, I think that also the sphere as a whole experiment was uh, dealing with a lot of risk and was also trying uh, riskfully to unite different realms. And what I think is that risk is also uh, a counterpart, needs a counterpart that is trust. Trust is uh, both an intuitive concept and also a quite uh, complex philosophical notion. Uh, this definition in the slide is uh, quite interesting because it shows us how to trust somebody is always choosing also to be vulnerable, so to take risk from the opposite set of behaviors that can happen if your trust is misposed. And also trust is always uh, looking at the future, is always directing towards the future. I think that for the, the, the context of the sphere, the karmic engine can be described as a trust maker. The karmic engine is composed, as you know, by uh, different smart contracts that are pieces of code that can automate a kind of human interaction, like a transaction, for example. And what the Karmic Engine does is an example of a trustless technology, a technology that tries to embody trust in a, in a certain piece of infrastructure. Uh, the piece of infrastructure are contracts in this case, and as the quote on the slide shows, a contract is also an occasion for encoding sociality. And I think we tried, as in the Karmic Engine, to encode the trusted relationships that were at the at the ground they were the ground for the world sphere development uh, what also is interesting is that sometimes trust is not uh, enough or is not sufficiently uh, automated so we always have to rely also on a human component and this is what i mean by trust as a matter of love and they refer to love because a really interesting element from the sphere was the idea of love letters that in the context of uh, giving the performances a new life, the original artists are writing these letters to the future artists as a kind of indication from what the new derivative performance can be. And this is an example of how uh, automated trust and the human love-based trust can coexist together and create a trustworthy network. And with this trustworthy network, we now have to move forward and we have to maybe look at the future and try to imagine possible directions. And remember that we are like the Angelus Novus, so we are also always directing at the past in a certain sense, referring to the past. So my question for uh, the future of the sphere is uh, this one. So we don't know yet what an NFT can do. We have produced an NFT in the context of the sphere. And what is interesting now is to explore possible directions that this NFT can take to evolve. In this sense, we don't have to consider an NFT just as a token, but we can consider it as a tool for creating a derivative ecology of different artworks and ideas and concepts evolving together. In this sense, an NFT can be described 
with the concept of open aperta, that means open work. And it's an open work if it allows for new unpredictable things to happen within the context of the system that NFT can embody. So I will show some examples to give you a more practical idea of what uh, I'm talking about. And yeah, I hope this can be like kind of prophetic visions for what the sphere can evolve into. So my first example is this project by Sarah Friend. Sarah Friend uh, is an artist and software developer based in Berlin. This project is called Lifeforms and it consists of a collection of NFTs that are these lifeforms and they are imagined as living beings on the blockchain. Uh, the interesting thing is that lifeforms are based on a simple rule. You cannot hold your lifeforms into your account, your wallet, for more than 90 days. Otherwise, the lifeform will die. That's the simple idea that Sarah Friend designed in her system. But this is already an interesting idea and quite provocative. If we consider the typical attitude in the crypto space, there is a huge emphasis on holding. You hold something, a token, an NFT, until it is valuable enough for you. Instead, Sarah Friend is encouraging for this possession and for the circulation of these life forms across a certain trusted circuit that can allow them to be still alive, to survive. This is interesting and it also adds a level of unpredictableness to the, to the artwork because the artist herself, she didn't know how this uh, performance, how this artwork could evolve. The effect is that for now, as this diagram shows, the first 50 life forms uh, didn't do so well, and only nine of the only 13 of them survived. Sorry, and many of them actually died in the first account that actually acquired them. In another interview, Sarah Friend also mentioned the fact that some people were trying to sell these life forms for a really high price. Obviously, when you are selling really high, it's not sure that you are gonna sell, and so it's prob it's like we can tell that probably many of these life forms died like this. So this is already an interesting play and like an interesting take on collaboration within networks to let the artwork evolve in a certain way. What is also interesting that I just saw recently, like before talking now on Twitter, is that of these life forms that survived, another artist took interest for them and is trying to create a parallel life form for each one of the survived life forms and create a sort of twin for them to kind of repopulate this, uh, this collection, trying to yeah, correct the mistake of the past. Another interesting work is still by Sarah Friend and it's called Off. Off was a collection, is a collection of NFTs. They are all black geometrical shapes and they are shaped according to the size of a screen. And it's not only that, if you acquire one of these NFT, you will receive a cryptographic key that is a key to decrypt something and you receive a sentence that is encrypted the whole collection actually hides an essay this essay is gonna be uh, readable only if the all the collectors collaborate together and this still didn't happen after more than one year that the project is released this project has been described by the artist as a multiplayer prison dilemma referring to the famous dilemma of game theory and it's again, you know, uh, a kind of uh, play, play with collaboration or competition within the system that the artwork creates. Uh, also, Sarah Friend described both of her works as contingent system. And I think this is a really uh, precise description because they are contingent and they depend on so many factors that the artist is not anymore in control, but the artwork has more power than the artist herself or himself. And, and so it's, you cannot tell how it's gonna end up before releasing the project and like interacting with your audience. And I think this is a huge possibility open up by this kind of new digital tools that we can play with. Another example is uh, Plantoid. This is a older project. It came out in 2015 by Primavera de Filippi. The, she's a brilliant sco law scholar involved in the blockchain, blockchain space since a long time. A plantoid is uh, basically uh, the Android version of a plant. Uh, these plantoids were these huge monuments that we can see in the picture. And they also have a Tell soul that I think is a special expression in the context of the sphere. They were associated to a cryptographic wallet, and this wallet can accept both Ethereum and Bitcoin. If the audience liked the statue, uh, they could donate 
a cryptocurrency to a specific plant. Once a certain threshold is reached, the plant uh, will send a request through, again, a smart contract, so an aut automatic piece of code, and will basically create a commission for artists to create so to reproduce the life of these automatic life beings and this was the key concept behind this artwork what is also interesting is that this is a direct provocation against the artworks the art world so to say because we are again not focusing on the artists anymore but we are focusing on the specific piece of art that can through the blockchain for example uh, have an autonomous existence and being able uh, even to reproduce itself through the system created by smart contract. So I think this is really uh, an important and interesting idea that obviously has also been explored a lot in the context of the sphere. A uh, more recent project is, uh, is this one, a slice of the pie by Silvio Russo and Sebastian Schmieg. This uh, came out basically two weeks ago and is still exhibited in the Kunsthalle Zurich. And it consists again of two uh, different uh, pieces, one online and one offline. The offline piece is this uh, in LED installation that you can see in the picture and is connected to a website. On the website, you can buy a slice of this cake and you can upload an image in that slice and this slice is going to be exhibited lifetime in the actual museum then once per day an nft is minted at a random time and the full cake is going to be this nft that is going to be sold so artists if the nft is sold the profits are going to be shared by the artists that actually acquire the slice what is interesting is that, again, in this context, artists can collaborate or even normal audience can collaborate and compete to be in the slice. Why do I say also compete? Because there is also another function, the, the, the function of upvoting. You can basically click up to 10 times so that your slice is going to prevail on other people's slice. And so in the hope of being then minted as an NFT and eventually getting profit. These are some of the examples of what happened in the image on the left the upper side of the cake is acquired by one artist and the lower part by another artist so it's three and three while the second one this cat picture is only by a single uh, buyer and i think again also slice of the pie really embodies this contingent system idea because again the the original artist or curator if we can call it like that just created a system with some rules some mechanism and then it's up to the audience or the participant to decide how to play with that and uh, this can lead to unpredictable outcomes it's also again a provocation against the classic against the classic art world system in the sense that you are directly paying for being on exhibit and this is also uh, yeah is an interesting take on the system that uh, moves behind the the art world my final reference is, uh, is from a famous artist daminish daminish created the current it, is, it was a collection of NFT again, consisting of this uh, dots painting. Uh, he sold all the collection and then he let the audience decide which one of the, if the physical copy or the digital copy could survive. Many, actually the majority of people decided to keep the physical copy, but a good amount, there were uh, 10,000 NFTs and uh, 4,800 people decided to burn the physical copy. This is what is happening in the picture here. And again, I think this is obviously the provocation in the style of Hirsch as we know him, but at the same time is an interesting use of NFT. As we know, NFT is a non-fungible token, but it, in this particular example, it, it kind of uh, acquired a usability, a fungibility, and it also works as a kind of governance token uh, uh, directing the performance outcome because the performance could have been different and instead what happened is that Hirsch actually burned the, what the audience say to burn so I think it's also an interesting example of the way we can use an NFT for creating and directing a performance in the real world so in the context of my research at uh, Curve Labs uh, we define this uh, kind of new branch of creative production as Mechanism Art Mechanism Art uh, uses the idea of mechanism design in a certain sense of game theory. So creating economic incentives to direct a system towards a specific outcome, but gives it a Dionys Dionysiacal uh, take on that. So it corrupts 
economical rationality and uh, it allows for uh, experimentation with economical rules and value measures. At the same time, it also creates a kind of multiplayer game as also Sarah Friend defined their project because uh, we can see a new kind of interaction going on between the artist and the audience and the audience through NFTs become a real part of the, of the performance in a way that are unpredictable and contingent, as we said. So I think this can be a possible direction in which the NFT of the sphere and this kind of creative production can move forward. And only in this way, we can both explore the real possibilities of these new tools. And at the same time, we can subvert and change and mutate the classical rules of artistic interaction. So that's it. That will be the paradigm of mechanism art emerging from the intersection of different forces. And that's it. Thank you very much for having me here. And these are my contacts if you want to keep talking about these topics. And thank you.